Hey everybody, instead of posting a video and editing one, I've been doing more of the raw, live talk. It's gonna be even better because I got a microphone coming, a Rode mic for my iPhone. I do a lot of filming with my iPhone. But today I'm gonna do a water change. Like, it could be boring, right? But a lot of people get a kick out of seeing water changes, even though, what's up you guys popping in? What's up, what's up, what's up? I talked to a lot of you guys last night. We did a cool hangout live stream Friday nights, which of course turned into talking about guitars and cool things and everything, which is great. That's how we're going to end a lot of our live streams. Don't always have to be about saltwater aquarium care, but I'm going to give you a quick little showing of this tank. I wanted you to see how well the corals are doing under this new LED light by Phoenix. By the way, don't forget to check out the video description of all the videos. It shows what I use in my aquarium what gear I use and links so you can go and purchase some on Amazon. Purchase, purchase this stuff. I get all my stuff on Amazon. It's quick delivery, it's cheaper, and I just don't like dealing with the public. All right, enough said. So, um, I just did another live stream from my other channel, Rotter Studios. I talked about the solo movie, which I did not see and will not see. Spent about 45 minutes with those guys. It was a great conversation. But I wanted to show you how well this light is doing. I got rid of the T5s, which I'm selling the T5 light if you guys are in the Chicagoland area, if you're interested. The ATI bulbs are only three months new. So there you go. But I wanted to show you this light. Right now, this is a Phoenix light. It's a 48 inch light. I'm gonna be doing a water change, but I just wanted to show you this light first. Um, yeah, the Soilo movie, right? <laughs> and uh, thanks for correcting me. So it's a 48 inch light. This will do outstanding on your 48 inch tank. They also have different sizes. They have ones that are a foot, two feet. They discontinued the three foot temporarily, I think, because they're making some upgrades to it. They have a uh, four foot, 48 inch. Hey, Armando, welcome. I'm gonna show you what corals I have. I love the softies and anything that flows in the current. Um, I like anything that shows movement. I'm gonna be getting some more corals and uh, maybe going to see Mark. I did a video on his brief store last weekend to get some really cool corals. Um, so I've got one foot of no light and one foot of no light because it's a six foot long tank. It's a 48 inch light, but it does a great job. And I've got it just balanced on top. And um, I got the wire, the, the mesh screen on top and it's balancing on the solid piece here. So it's not going anywhere. It's a very lightweight light. I'll probably get another one. I was gonna get the Mars Aqua Chinese boxes, but I would need two, probably one, two, three, and that would have been $310. Didn't wanna spend it, kinda of don't have it. So I got this Phoenix light for like $92, $89, something like that. But let me just show you before I show you the corals and do a water change, what this light looks like. So. It's on, obviously. It's got a switch over here for the white light LEDs and a few handful of blue LEDs. So it's not pure white. It's just enough to give it some uh, color, like natural sunlight. A good question. There's no heat on it, and it will not... I mean, it's a little warm, but it, it's not gonna melt that mesh at all it's not hot it's just it's barely warm it's uh, their LEDs and there's uh, there's barely any light barely barely any heat and it's waterproof they've got plastic underneath it so it's fine now I'm gonna turn on the other light which is a whole other blue strip of LEDs you'll see it looks better in person but you'll get an idea That's off, sorry. That's adding a whole nother second strip of blues. So it that's actually a pretty good representation of what it looks like. It adds a subtle, nice blue to the tank. I like it. Now if I turn the other side off, it's just going to be all blue.
That's not a good representation, but it is purely actinic now, and it's great moonlight. The coral really pops. I know you can't really see the detail with this iPhone, but it looks really nice and it's really subtle. The reason I didn't get the Mars Aqua lights, aside from expenses, is I was doing a lot of reading that people are dimming down the Aqua, Mars Aqua Chinese box lights. Why buy a really powerful light if you have to dim it down to 20% or so? This light is perfect. I like the ease of it. I'm simple, on and off switch, done. Turn this back on. We'll turn this blue off. See? And I bought this on my own. Phoenix is not paying me to say this. Let me show you. These zoanthids, they're more purple. Yeah, you can use the lights on timers. I've got a link to these lights in the video description. Um, just plug the light into a timer, leave them on, and the timer will turn them on and off. I got a Mexican turbo snail. This dude's doing a good job. The star polyps look more full. I'm going to do a water change. I'm going to feed these guys. Coralline algae is starting to come back. Like really like small. Now look, it's extended. It's flowing. It's full. Same with this. I just turned the lights on 10 minutes ago, so it's coming to life. In this tank, I don't have much flow. I've got my one MP40 going, and that's it. Oh, yeah. Christina, the hair algae is all gone. There's, there's nothing left. for that as well i tried everything mm, i did try flucanazole it did nothing bronx reefer what's up dude i tried mass water changes i tried flucanazole i did a lot of research on all this stuff i did phosphate rx I tried many things. I tried more mass water changes. I tried a uh, phosphate reactor, which I still have going right now, and I'm not going to take it out. I tried so many things, and I was frustrated at the end of my rope. I tried scraping it off and siphoning it out and picking it out, and it was getting worse. The, the thing that finally completely destroyed it, I tried a refugium. That's not going to do much of anything unless you've got a refugium a third the size of your tank. Um, and then you have to hope that that outcompetes your um, green hair algae issue. The only thing that worked was melting the hell out of it with hydrogen peroxide food grade 35%. Really, really powerful stuff. Link to this in my video description. I got a syringe. You dose one milliliter for every 10 gallons. So I was dosing 12 milliliters every other day or every third day. And you got to get gloves because if you put this on, it's going to burn you like a sunburn. It doesn't hurt your fish. It doesn't hurt your corals. The corals will close up for about a day. I overdosed. I used three times the amount. The corals were closed for close to a week, but... That's because I OD'd on the stuff. The fish were totally fine, as you can see. Um, I do have Miracle Mud in here. I've got 30 pounds of Miracle Mud in my second sump. That didn't do anything to help. The only thing it did was I dosed this, and I just put it in a syringe, and I syringed, turned all the flow off the tank. I syringed. I've got videos on this on top of and let it flow over the rock 
and it literally melts the green hair algae away. A lot of people swear by flucanazole. Yeah, that's right. You get this on your skin, it feels like it tingles, like a slight burn. It doesn't hurt. It's just annoying. It's like, wh why does my skin feel weird? Oh, I got this on it. So I got gloves. Um, so that's that. That's how I cured it. Thanks for asking. I highly recommend it. People have bought this and it works really well for them. I mean, it melts and destroys uh, green hair algae. And it's also used for if you've got mold in the house or in your shower, you can spray it in there. Really good stuff, but food grade, 35% works. Yeah, I recommend it, Christina. Get it. Get this stuff if it comes back. I went through only like a third of a bottle. That's all I needed. So now I've got like a bunch extra in case it comes back. I may dose it like once a week in the water column through the sump just to, you know, keep it at bay. Because once it gets in your water column within like 10, but I literally, like I said, turned off all the pumps and I use the syringe to gently let it flow on top of the green hair algae. And it's actually very fun to watch it melt away and bubble away and the rock becomes bare within like 20 seconds. There's nothing left. Um, you do one rock like every few days and you'll be good to go. Hey everybody, what's up? Yeah, Christine, I was gonna give up on my reef too, um, but I'm determined and that's why I have the channel, I fight and I fight. And I really, I was, I didn't want to look at it. I wasn't looking at my tank. I hated looking at it. And I'm like, I just, I was doing research like a bio, like a biologist, not a saltwater aquarium. And I did research on what is green hair algae? What is green algae? What is it composed of? What will kill it? And I found some video on a non saltwater tank site about um, hydrogen peroxide and how it destroys the membranes and algae. Um, and it just nails it, but it doesn't kill your refugium. But at that point, I didn't care because I wanted the refugium gone. I got tired of dealing with it. It's just not me. Um, and then I did research on will hydrogen peroxide kill fish? And the answer is no. And I tried it, and it's just damn phenomenal. Now, the tank is clear. I love the way this looks. I'm so happy again. I'll probably maybe put sand in it. I'm not sure. I do miss my sand. So I'm gonna do a water change. Yeah, someone mentioned, if you guys want, um, there's a dollar sign in the comments. I can't remember what it's called, but if you click it, you can contribute money. Then I'll put your name um, on the RoderTubeReef.com website as a contributor. All, all the money that comes in goes to help this channel and make it better, and I can get things, because no one sponsors me, um, to show you guys and demonstrate. No, I didn't have much coralline algae die off. A lot of my coralline algae pretty much died off, 90% of it, because of this stupid white starfish. Those little Asterina starfish, they drilled through my rock and they go after coralline algae. And that's another reason I also tried a uh, tuxedo um, urchin and it died after a week. I got a bad one, so I didn't go back to them. But I also read the tuxedo urchins do eat coralline algae. It's another reason I didn't put another urchin in there. So in the saltwater change, um, I, uh, yes, I ghost feed. When I start out a new tank, I don't use anything out of a bottle to let mother nature occur. I just let mother nature occur when I'm starting a tank. Um, I want to go and get some new rock. I want to prop up this middle piece here and Mad River Reefs, I just saw your comment. That is so bad. I'm so sorry. That's tough, man. If ever I take a vacation, I'm going to have to find somebody to come in and maybe my stepdaughter, you know, and teach her do this and do this and do this. The tank is pretty much self-sufficient, and that's another reason I don't have reactors and auto top-off units and this and that and calcium reactors and bleh 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 which is another reason why I don't have clams and all that because you got to dose more and I just don't want to deal with it cool coral for movement and fish 
Okay, so I'm gonna start on the water change. Talk amongst yourselves, and I'll be back. I'm you. You know, you'll see me. I just gotta refill some jugs. I'm gonna vacuum out the sand bed. What's left of it? There's no sand at the bottom. It's bare bottom. I like it. You know what, Steve? He is close enough to watch my tank, but with his work schedule, it's crazy. He works weird hours, and he's got the kids. So, you know, I don't know if I'd want to ask him, um, but I may. You know what? If you started your tank, I don't recommend putting anything from a bottle in your tank. I mean, do what you want. It's not bad, but, you know, stuff in a bottle that it can expire... It's not real in my opinion. When I started my tank, um, I would just ghost feed. I went and I bought some shrimp from the butcher, the small cocktail shrimp. I cut a few of them in half and I tossed them in the tank. Then I would feed pellets and I would just wait and I would measure the water for ammonia. And when I saw ammonia start to grow because that food was breaking down, I'd put a couple more pieces of shrimp in there and I'd let it break down until ammonia dropped to zero because the bacteria will grow and it'll beat out the ammonia and then you'll be set. Take it slow. All right. So this is kind of the boring part unless you guys like watching water changes. There's not much sand. Look, it's a, it's a bare bottom because when I was doing water changes, I'll tell you what, with a sand bed, the water was coming out dark yellow, like urine, because the water holds all that nastiness, and you do a little vacuuming of the sand bed, and it's just nasty. Now, when I do water changes, the water changes are pretty much clear. It's like, wow, do I even need to do a water change? I haven't done a nitrate test, but I am going to do a water change today, and um, we'll see. But um, I like doing a 10% water change every week. It's healthy. And, yeah, channel Chupa Kathingi. Again, I always feel like I'm botching your name. But um, it's okay to vacuum the, the, the top layer just slightly. But you don't want to go, like, into it deeply. I did in a, a few areas. Um, sorry, dude. You know what? That's just going to be your name from now on. Chupa Kathingi. Chupa Kathingi. Kathingi. That's going to be your name. Because I, unless you want to send me how to pronounce it. But it's going to be, that. that's just going to be our thing. Chupaka thingy. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Unless it bothers you, but it can be our thing. Um, I really like having no sand, but you know what? There's some sand I cannot get up, but it's just enough. To, like, to be honest, I'm t Gary Johnson, what's up? Um... I could get a five pound bag of sand for like what, 12 bucks? And I could just like gently put it in here. So I'm getting the look of sand, but it's not gonna be deep enough. It'll only be like two millimeters just to give me the aesthetics of sand. I like that idea. Cause right now, see it's like half glass, half a millimeter deep of sand. So it's cool. I don't need a sand bed. And if I do go back to a sand bed, I'll probably wind up taking it out. But I'd like to get like a two inch deep sand bed everywhere on just glass and barely touch the sand and see how my parameters are. That's definitely a test. Where did that accent come from? That's definitely a test I want to do. All right. But for now, I'm going to leave it as is. Maybe get a five pound bag, put it in there for the aesthetics. But I'm telling you, when I do a water change now, the water is pretty much clear. And that's because I don't have a detritus sink, which is a sand bed capturing all that uneaten food. Now, I know that there's millions and millions of life forms in the sand bed that's beneficial to your aquarium. Um, but if you don't have enough of that beneficial life to break down the food and the fish waste, you're going to have a problem. That's why you don't want to vacuum it. And I made that mistake in the beginning. And to be honest, I did vacuum the sand bed a little too much, destroying and disturbing that life. Um, if you have a deep sand bed, that could be dangerous because you're releasing all those toxins deep within the sand bed. Harmful to the fish and your corals. 
All right, so let me siphon this water and then I'll do a water change. I'll be right back. put this towel down just in case but I'm really liking the look of this tank I am really 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 loving my tank again because green hair algae has gone I've got a killer light I can sit down and I could look at it and it doesn't blind me that t5 lighting was damn blinding because you're sitting down looking at the tank and the glow was blinding you hey not to mention I'm saving a lot more energy I can imagine LED light strip versus four T5 bulbs. So, I love sand too, but you know what? This is like a happy medium. Glass, eh, if you can deal with that, I've got a little sand there. But it's like, it's barely in there. I mean, it's just stuff that I can't siphon out. So I'm just going to leave it. Because, eh, to be honest, to have all glass would drive me maybe a little nuts. Yeah, dude. I like no sand, but yeah, and Bees Reef, yeah, I, 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 I like looking at my tank again. I'm actually looking forward to getting some coral. And I don't like the look of the bare bottom tank too much either, but like I said, there's just enough sand. I think I may get a, a five pound bag just to scatter it around, you know, just to scatter it around so we don't see any glass. No, I'm not dosing the peroxide anymore because the green hair algae is all gone. Peroxide totally took care of it. No, I don't want to paint it. You know why, Gary? Because then I got to drain it. And I don't, it's just, I don't need it. Painting would look pretty cool. It really would, but I don't want to disturb the tank and, and do all this. 35% hydrogen peroxide. There's a link. Yeah, from the underside, I could do that. Because some people have painted the inside with like a latex, which looks really sharp. Or, you know what they do? Um, they put like the backing, the, the blue backing inside the tank. Um, let, um, yeah, Christina, green hair algae is a cancer. It does not damn go away um right, let me see if i can show you guys this new fish he's he hides a lot here fishy 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 he was out here he was the blue and yellow one there he is see him very pretty and someone called me out there like, hey, you just got a new fish, but you didn't quarantine. No, I did. I just filmed that video a while ago. So he was, he, he was quarantined for like four weeks. He's cool. Then I put him in. Leia. Leia. Yeah, Tom, bi color angel. Leia. Baby, come. Come here, babe. She's playing. Okay, so let me do this water change. Talk amongst yourselves. I will do a water change. Hopefully you won't get too bored. And then I'll feed the fish. Leia, come here, babe. Beastie, come. He's ready. Look how big this puppy dog got. Here she goes. One year ago today, I picked her up. She was like a little baby, like eight pounds. Now she's like 65. Oh, yeah? What did he say? I have to email him the video. What did Mark say? Oh.
Oh, good. You showed them the video. That was cool. Yeah, I forgot to email him. Yeah, my brother is always in there. <laughs> He's always in there, like, once a week. And I go in there less often, way less often, because I live further away. He's a great guy. Really, really a nice guy. Okay, let me start doing this. Oh, no, really? He sold the Dust Giardini? I always feel like I'm saying that wrong. Damn, I love that fish. I'm thinking about going back to get that maroon clown from Mark, to be honest. I just keep jamming this tank with fish. But look, they're all peaceful. They get along fine. Um, if I can afford it, I'll get a bigger tank. But I just... I just don't... I love this 125. I love the 125. A 75-gallon is just too small. My brother's got my old one, my old 75. He feels it's too small. Um... Now he wants to upgrade. I feel the 125 is perfect because it's six feet long. I will never build a new chank chupaca thingy because I saw what happened to, um, oh my God, my brain is so frozen. I've been doing so much filming this weekend. Um, no, I would, no, I would not, Emmanuel, I wouldn't use bacteria from a bottle at all. By putting shrimp in, yes, Farm Boy Reef, thank you, the poor guy. That sucks, dude. I haven't checked up on his channel. I don't know what he's doing, but I will never build a tank. Not to say that a manufacturer's tank is perfect, but I, I draw the line with working with electrical and thousands of gallons of water, hundreds of gallons of water. Um, I, don't, don't, I would not put any bacteria from a bottle. No man made anything. Just put some shrimp in there and some saltwater fish food and just let it begin on its own. Let Mother Nature do its thing. I believe in that. Let Mother Nature do its thing. All right, let me go get this uh, jug. I'm gonna do water change. Then when I'm done, I'll feed the fish. I'll try talking to you guys while I do it. But this is just like an excuse for you guys to hang out and I can show you stuff. <clears throat> Gotta have the coffee as usual. You know what? I did a live stream last night. It was tons of fun with you guys. Um, now I got my friends from the UK. Anybody from Manchester? I told I love Manchester. The accent is just directly from God. I love that. Um, and then I did a Rodder Studios live stream about the Solo movie, which I didn't see and will never see because I hate Disney. Boycotting them and Star Wars now because it sucks. And now I'm doing a live stream here. Nothing but streaming. I love it. Hey, Melanie. Um, I just, uh, talking about the tank. Now I'm going to start the water change. So, because <clears throat> Disney sucks, it's all about feminism now. Kathleen Kennedy has destroyed it. The story is lacking. The characters are garbage. Do a search for why Star Wars sucks or Disney ruined Star Wars on YouTube. You're going to have hours of enjoyment of why it's so bad. Um, okay. I keep these stands here that I made out of gas pipes and I spray painted them only because when I do water changes I hang my LED from them I might want to get a chain long enough to support these 
all the time, but I'm not sure. I mean... See how it made a little difference? Not, it looks really nice, but the tank is not as bright, so I like to have it right on top of the netting. Yes, Chupacathinky, world-class bullshitters, has an excellent handful of YouTube videos on why Star Wars sucks. <clears throat> got the five-gallon jug. I'm going to do two of those. I got the siphon. I'm not going to suck on the hose. That's stupid. I'm going to put the hose in here. I'm going to start the siphon naturally. You'll see what I mean. Yeah, dude, I watch all those channels because, you know, my other channel, Rotter Studios, go ahead and check that out. There's a link in the video description. I talk about photography, video editing, all that stuff, movie reviews, movie reviews, stop motion animation. So I'm involved in that too. It's my other channel that is growing, and of course the Joker box, which is just silly fun. Here we go. <clears throat> Man, the shimmer on those LEDs looks awesome. So when vacuuming, since I don't have any sand, I'm going to focus on the bottom. <clears throat> Fill up the tube, flip it upside down, you got an instant suction. a lot of stuff out of the sand. There's not much sand there, but... <clears throat> yeah. If there was a sand bed, I would just be vacuuming the top of it because you don't want to disturb the sand bed. dump this outside and I'll do uh, jug number two. I gotta turn off the pumps. Can you guys be quiet?
No refugium. I tried it. I don't like it. Just another thing for me to worry about. Plus, the refugium is not that big, so it's not worth it. I mean, I've read that you've got to have a refugium like at least a quarter the size of your aquarium or a third for it to be effective. So I'm going to come back with some water. Got to fill up the jugs first. Can we stop the arguing? All right, guys, that's it for now. I'm going to stop the stream and hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up because I don't want to bore you guys. i got to put 10 gallons in here. I'm going to scrape some of the coralline algae off the back of the glass. It was great to see you. Give the video a like or a dislike, whatever suits you best. And uh, thanks for subscribing. The fish, thank you. And I'll see you next Friday. We'll probably do another live stream. Have a great, great, great Memorial three-day weekend. Hopefully you guys all have a three-day weekend. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for hanging out again. Love having you guys around.